Hi, I'm Maya, a software engineer on the Telegraph team at Influx Data. And I'm Nathaniel, manager on the Flux team, also at Influx Data. And today we're going to talk about Flux and S2 geometry. Yeah, and today's part two in a three-part mini-series on this topic. So what is S2? Yeah, S2 geometry is a system for breaking the globe or the Earth down into cells so you can determine where things are. So you may have a few cells like this or many cells, and the idea is if you know that two things are in the same cell, you know they're kind of close to each other. If two things are not in the same cell, then you know they're kind of far apart. And this way you can kind of map the whole world and track where things are and where they aren't. So what makes S2 different from other systems? Yeah, so other systems will take the world and they'll put project it onto a flat piece of paper, into a plane. And that will create weird gaps and seams where sometimes the cell lines don't line up. And so what S2 does that's different is it leaves things on a sphere and it draws its cell lines on the surface of a sphere. And so the way they do their math is every edge of a cell is the shortest path between those two points on the cell. And that way, you know that all the cells are lining up nicely and have no seams or gaps. This way, if you have something that you're tracking, you know what it lives in exactly one cell, not two cells, not zero cells. And you can be confident that things are gonna work out correctly. That sounds super precise. Can you tell me about the different levels? Yeah. So the levels allow you to change the resolution with which you care about things. So on the left here, we've got just four cells. So you have very little granularity for where something may be. And on the right, you've got a few more cells. So the S2 specifies about 30 levels, where the zeroth level has six cells for the whole globe. So not very many. And then the 30th level has um, tons of cells. And they're down to a few, or less than a few square centimeters to know about how big they are. So you can be really precise. So if you're, for example, building an application for trucks and you need to know whether a truck is on a road or off a road, you may pick a level that makes it so that a cell is a few square meters big. And that way you know it's on the, on the road or not. But if you're building an application for a crane that's gonna lift shipping containers off a ship and then put them on the dock, you're gonna pick a level where your cell size is within a few millimeters so that you can be way more precise about where you're placing that container. And so this way you can pick your level for the application that you need, and that way you can be efficient in your computations um, that you're working with. Being that you're on the Flux team, how can I leverage S2 using Flux? Yeah, great question. So Flux standard library comes with a package called Geo. It's currently experimental, but will be promoted in the future. And that package has a function called shape data that can take your data that's just your latitude and your longitude data, uh, your basic geotemporal data, and you can convert it into a data that has an S2 cell column. And so what it will do is it will take your data, compute the cell ID for every row in your data, and then add that to your data. And notice we pass in the level here to this shape data function. This is where we pick what level of resolution we care about. And so input data, output data. If I already have latitude and longitude, why would I want an S2 cell? Yeah, this is a great question. This is essentially to make computations faster. So computers aren't very good at trigonometry, and to compute the distance using just latitude and longitude values, you have to use sines and cosines, which are expensive operations. But if you know the cell ID, then if this cell size is small enough to be something you care about, then if you know two things are in the same cell, you don't have to do any of that expensive trigonometry math for, to determine that they're close to each other or to determine that they're far apart by knowing that they're in different cell IDs. And so it's a way of saving computational power and being more efficient, which matters a lot when you're dealing with lots and lots of geotemporal data. So now we have the S2 cell, what can I do with it? Yeah, so you can ask all kinds of questions now of your data. You can ask whether a point has entered a certain region, you can ask how far away points are, and many more things. And we'll cover that more in part three of this series. I'm looking forward to it. If you want more information, check out our documentation. And we can't wait to see what you build.